Okay, this is the deck timber that Ron dug up when uh, during the dedication ceremony of the Noah's Ark National Park. He was using his radar for the journalists and dignitaries and they found with the radar, Ron saw this hmm. and he said, that looks like uh, a piece of timber and he had never been allowed to dig anything up on Noah's Ark. Here's a close-up of it. But when he did, this piece had been broken off over here and had fossilized like this. It's, it's as if God had preserved this piece for that very moment for them to see. And what's interesting about it, the Bible says that uh, they used gopher wood. Yes. And we've discovered that this is laminated like... Um, plywood, yes. many thin layers, layers put together, which would make it super strong. So you can see here, right here, that part of this wood has been worn away, and you can see uh, evidence of layering in here. Yes. And when you look on the end here, down here, let me see if I can get the light down here. Mm. Excuse me, I'm just going to wet it a little bit because you can see the layers better. It's getting dried out. You can't see it, but there's a layer. There's a layer. Mm -hmm. Here's a layer. Mm. And this is a very thick layer right here. Mm. Yes. Yes, I can see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Totally uh, one, one, two, three, four. Four layers. I think that's all we yeah. can see right now. Yes, four layers. But what else is interesting is it talks about it was covered in pitch. You know, he was told to cover it in pitch. And if you'll look right here, you can see that it looks like some sort of a glue substance of, or something um, was oozing out here. Like a lady... Um, Ice is a cake, puts frosting on a cake, and then mm -hmm. puts a layer on top, and it squeezes out. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like it was pressed together with uh, maybe bitumen or something that was um, very, very strong to laminate the wood. Yeah. So this would have been the actual end of the timber because this glue was coming out. But the other end, can you... Oh, this is the glue. Uh-huh. That's a glue substance that looks oh. as if it's coming out, see? Oh, mm -hmm. it kind of flow out. Mm-hmm. That's the pitch. Oh. Now, if you'll turn this around and put the other end down here, I'll let you do it. I know, this is so heavy. heavy, unbelievably heavy. It's very heavy. You know, how can wood just... How can wood be so heavy? Because it's fossilized. It's been oh. replaced oh. by minerals. All okay. of the wood is gone, and molecule by molecule, uh -huh. it was replaced with the the substance in the soil up above and fossilized it uh -huh. or petrified it. Uh -huh. But you can see here, this is not an end piece. This is a piece that was broken, mm. yes. and it fossilized that mm. way. Yes, yes. It's a very, very amazing specimen. But how, how it came to be found was amazing because it was in front of all the journalists and the governors and all of the, those people. So and they allowed Ruang to, they actually yes. had the soldier dig it up. Yes, they had and the then, soldier dig it up. And then as everybody left, the governor of the, uh, that was there, who was the head of the event, he told Ron, he says, you take this home and you have it tested. Because if I give it to my archaeologists here, it'll disappear and we'll never see it again. Mm. And Ron put it in the big case with his radar. Because that was very heavy and yeah. he could get it out with this in it. No problem. They wouldn't have had a problem anyhow with rocks. Right. You know? Right. So, you, so this was uh, sent to the lab? Yes. Where we have we have taken slices of okay. it here, but before that, 
Ron did take it to the lab, and I'm going to give you a book in a minute where I've published all of Ron's data uh, mm -hmm. up to the time of his death. Mm -hmm. And they did test it mm -hmm. and found out that it is uh, it does contain organic carbon. If it didn't have organic carbon in it, then you couldn't prove that it had once been something living. Oh. It's got a lot of inorganic carbon, mm. but any organic carbon at all is evidence that this had once been uh, a substance that had was organic at one time. Mm -hmm. I understand. Oh. Yeah. Yes, it's amazing. It is so amazing that, oh, you know, the Bible, yeah. It's like, man, it's right in front of your eyes. It is. And God allowed, I mean, God preserved this to such a time like this. Exactly. The timing was perfect. The yeah. timing was perfect. And the time is so near. That's why he's, mm -hmm. the, you know, in his plan yeah. to reveal it. Yes. Did you look at this? Yep. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I was there when, when Ron found this. Mm. He was not allowed to mm. take anything from the actual ark itself. That was, mm -hmm. that was his, what he was told. So I think it was in 1990 or 91, maybe mm -hmm. it was 91, we were all, there were a lot of us there, mm. and we were walking up onto the ark, and there, right off of the ark, not on it, right off of it, Ron saw this. Mm. And he picked it up, and mm. he gave it to DeLavar Avchi, who was his taxi driver. Okay. And DeLavar just put it in his pocket, mm -hmm. and then when they were standing on the ark, mm. Ron took it out, said, hand me that. And they looked at it, and it's very clearly a rivet and a washer. Now, we've had to Oh, uh, this is a washer. Uh-huh, that's the washer. And we did have it tested. And it is made out of some space age metals. It's got yeah, titanium, oh. um, strontium, aluminum, things in there that we did not even know how to alloy until the 20th century. Yeah. So Noah was not, a, a, you know, a dumb old caveman. He was a he. He had the wisdom of God with him. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Luke would tell about this. <coughs> Ron made that. Um, he had that made by the time I met him, that that model. Hmm. And he determined the things in it from radar. Now what we do know is that not very much of this structure was really evident, but what he did when he would find something on the radar, he would assume symmetry. Mm -hmm. You know, if he found two or three of those here and here, maybe one down here, he would just assume. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he did, the most interesting thing to me is this area right through here. And he found out from his radar that between these rooms here, we'll, we'll call them rooms, cubicles, and the outer portion of, the, uh, of where the ribs were was an intersection that he didn't know what it was. He mm -hmm. thought maybe one, it was a flotation collar. If it was airtight, you know, and sealed, then the air would have, it, inside it would have made it more um, buoyant, you know, in the water. Mm. That it would, it would have provided some sort of uh, buoyancy. The other thing he thought it could possibly be was for food. Mm. He could have put food down in there, but he, did, he didn't know. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. Mm. And he found um, these little cubicles you know, mm. this configuration. Mm. The front of the boat clearly showed a door here, up front. That's okay. the only one door. Only one door that they could find. Noah's Ark. 
Yes. And it clearly shows inside that door, it goes down and it also goes up. It's a ramp system. So they some would have gone down, some would have come up. Now this second deck right here, he was able to find, um, you know, evidence of large chambers here. And he found evidence of small cubicles here. Yes. And then this big open space, he mm. assumed was, remember how the Bible says there was one window? Yes. A cubit roundabout? Mm-hmm. And he didn't know exactly what that meant unless it possibly meant this was the one window, one cubit roundabout, and it would let... Now, we're not sure about this. This is all speculation. Mm. But from what he found, you know, he thought maybe there was something like this here to let light in. But we don't know. Because... This top deck was collapsed. Collapsed. It was collapsed, and what he did discover was that there was a thickness here, and then it suddenly became thinner here, mm. then it suddenly became thinner here. Mm. So he believed that the different decks, you know, this was the bottom, but then this deck was here, and then mm. this deck began there. Mm. So, but... So you said this is like the window? Mm-hmm. And you said, okay, so this is one window. One window, yeah. Well, one big window. Uh, well, no, oh. as oh. you can see, it's it's many. Many windows. But we don't know. Okay. We don't know. We don't have evidence for this. Mm -hmm. The evidence that he chose for that was the fact that there was an opening here. Mm. And the Bible says, he says, a window, one cubit roundabout. Mm. If it was just one cubit, it roundabout wouldn't mean, what did roundabout yeah, mean? Yeah. But roundabout implies that it extends some length. Mm -hmm. So that is speculation. Mm -hmm. We probably will never know about this mm -hmm. because, um, again, it's, it's collapsed. Yes. But yes. I, guess, I guess Randall showed you. Did you show? Okay, Randall, it's your turn. Because he's going to show you. I have you. a question. Oh, uh, so when the Bible said, mm -hmm. uh, when he let the the the, the, the pe pigeon out. Yes. So he was set that letting the pigeon out. Yeah, he from... had, he had to open a window to let it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah open the window. Yes. Mm -hmm. the dove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't that mm -hmm. we don't know. Okay. But now, Randall is going to tell you about the. Resistivity scans and Andrew, where did Andrew go? That they did um, in 2014, because this is exciting. Wow! This so this is new stuff. This is new stuff. Nobody's seen this. Yeah. It's not on the internet. Oh, you know, well, it's on the you, you do it here. No well, yeah, but nobody. N Z. Yeah. Okay. Up. Yeah. And and I will give you uh, the files if you want them. For all of these posters. Oh, that will be excellent. Because what you can do, uh, they're made to be the size. You have uh, Costco out there. Yeah. Okay, they're made this to uh, fit this size at Costco. Yes. Okay. So they're already ready. Wow. Now I'm going to turn it over to Randall, who did all this work. Here's Randall, right there. <laughs> I could not I recognize him. <laughs> okay. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Basically, in 2014, John Larson, who's our expert on this resistivity, mm. uh, met us out here with Andrew, mm. and we came out to this site and ran these scans, the blue lines going this direction, the long ways, and then three going the other side, mm. going the east and west. And so we had... I believe it was 13 scans run, and hmm. each line, it was about every three meters, there okay. was a spike in the ground. Okay. And we would run each scan, would take an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and it would, it's putting down thousands hmm. of 
data points. And it's really kind of like it's CAT scan. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you do a CAT scan on uh -huh. the body, you know, it shoots through and it, it, it's something like that. And then he has a program that ties all these scans and these data points together. Okay, okay. So that we'll be able to get a 3D image yes. of this boat. Yes. Well, his computer's not big enough to handle it, oh. but he's doing it as he can. Oh. And so what we're finding then is that, the, like for this bottom part of the boat, we have a deck at three feet, a deck at 20 feet, and look here at the shape. See the back of the boat here? Look at the shape of the boat, 45 feet deep. Mm. See the shape? Mm. And then here in the front, you got the shape coming in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the shape of the bow of the boat. Mm -hmm. Here's the rock it's impaled on. Mm. This rock here. Mm -hmm. It's impaled on that rock. So it slid down the mountain during a volcanic mudslide. Oh. And it broke away the very bottom piece, the keelson, like a sailboat. It broke the keelson off and left it up here at the top. Oh. And then the rest of the boat, it, it tore the bottom out of the boat, 120 feet or so, out of the bottom of the boat that's missing. Yeah, okay. And so it's badly damaged in the middle of the boat. But the lower part we're finding is still intact. And you'll see it's got so those white areas. We believe those to be rooms. Mm. And we have, these are timbers. Mm-hmm. You know, here we have a, showing a door mm. and the mm. ramp system. Mm. Here is where we hope to do some excavation. This section here, mm. we'll excavate here and it'll have these timbers oh. showing the deck support timbers. And here they are showing up in the scan. Mm. The deck support timbers in the scan. Mm. 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 So we got cavities showing up here. We got these, this black line here. It's the deck timber that's still intact. So mm. those, we'll dig down and find a whole layer of that. Mm. Whole layer of those timbers mm. for the floor mm. where they walked around. Mm. So this is something we hope to do uh, possibly this summer. Yes. Depending on turkeys, early ones work, uh, but he's voting on next Sunday. Mm. If they approve him, mm -hmm. then he's going to uh, discontinue the uh, hold that he's got on the country right now oh. and allow us to go ahead and work. Oh. So if everything goes well, we'll be able to get our permit back in force because mm. we had a permit to do this. Mm -hmm. And then we had a permit last, last July to yes. excavate. And two weeks before we brought our crews in, they had the the, um, the, the attempted coup of mm -hmm. turkey there. Mm -hmm. And so we put everything on hold. Oh. So we hope to have permission to get back in there and do this job. Okay. Okay? Okay. Um, you guys got a lot to look at yet. Yeah. You wanted to see something about giants. Yes, giants. So we're going to start off really big. How's that sound? Here's the biggest thing I've got. Okay, this. Is a bone on the foot. Okay. It's the big toe. Yes. Bone, the very last big toe bone. Yes. On a foot. And it's been repaired according to the doctor that x-rayed it. Okay. It's been x-rayed and this person had broke their toe, toe mm. bone mm. and then it healed up. This is from an 18 foot person, estimated. Big toe bone, there it is. That is this part? Yeah, okay. your very end big toe bone. Whoa! <laughs> Where did you find that? Where'd that come from, Mary? Randall? I'm uh, Randall. Ron. I <laughs> almost always call you Ron Randall. Okay, he found that in, um, uh, wait a minute, let me think a minute. In southeastern Turkey, um, 
when he was looking around to try to find the plane where uh, Babel was, and he found that. Looking for Babel. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not terribly far from from Noah's Ark, you know, maybe four or five hours. Okay, okay. All right, so here's another bone. Oh. Right here. Yeah. Another large person, ten oh. footer maybe or something. I think this probably I saw this in the video. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That somebody was showing this in. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to do this one right now? Okay. I'll, I'll do this one. You want to sit in this chair? No, I'm I'm okay down here. Okay. Back in about 1989 or 90, I forget which year it was. We were out at, uh, we were in Turkey, and we were out at the village where we believed Noah's house to be. Mm -hmm. And years ago, they had dug up a grave that we believe was Noah's wife's grave. Now, the reason for that was, uh, and you can see this in the, the book. Noah's Ark book, mm -hmm. Ron had found, before he ever even saw Noah's Ark, he had found a... Um, what appeared to be a tombstone. It was actually shaped like a tombstone, and it's in the in the book over there. In fact, let me. It'll be easier. I'm sorry. Let me get it. You can stay. You stay right here. Yeah, okay. she's gonna get there. the book and show it's you the right tombstone. Here. It'll be better for me telling the story. You can edit all this out. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let me find it here. Let's see. Okay. Here it is. His first trip out there, Ron found these stones. Mm. This one was standing, and this one was laying next to it. And both of them had these crosses carved into them which we believe were done by the Armenians that lived in the area because they were known to do that to all the stones. But what you can't see on here or on here was the engraving. You can see a little of it here. It had across the top of it what looked like a rainbow. Oh. And see, this was the cross that yes. was carved on it later. And it had what looked like an ocean wave with a little boat sitting on top of it, mm -hmm. and it had eight people walking away from there. And uh, he didn't have any photographs of it. I took these from um, eight millimeter film, mm. you know, very old and oh. degraded. But the faces on there, he said, looked a lot like this. Now this is something else that, that we found in a museum. Mm. But he said that it had one man, the tallest figure, mm. then a woman, mm. a little less tall, mm. then three men walking after that, and mm. they were a little shorter, and then after them, three women. Mm. And he believed that they clearly represented Noah, his wife, his three sons, and three daughters-in-law, and that these were the, the one um, that is laying down, right here, he believed that was Mrs. Noah's grave because all of them had their heads up and were walking away and her head was down and the eye was like a slit with a little cross over it, like she was asleep. And then the one that was standing up had both the man and the woman's head down. So that made us believe that Mrs. Noah died before Noah did. Mm. And someone dug up that grave, and there was jewelry in there. A jewelry? Lot of, a lot of jewelry. Uh -huh. And it was sold on the black market. And Ron was contacted by the Interpol to find out, I guess they thought maybe he did it, but he told them he, he didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we don't know anything else about it except that... Um, he was told that there was an 18-foot sarcophagus found. 
and that it was in the museum in, um, in Ankara. And the only corroboration I can give to that is one time Ron and I went to that museum. It's called, we call it the Hittite Museum in Ankara. It's not a big museum, it's you know just average size. And we went in there one day and there was nobody there but one man who was working. And uh, Ron asked him, he said, I've heard that there's a really long stone case been s s here. And the man says, yeah, it's in one of these back rooms. And he pointed to a room. He says, I think it's in there, but we're not allowed to go in there. Mm -hmm. And that's all that we've ever been able to find out about that. But we believe that was her sarcophagus. And anyhow, and that happened in about 84. Mm -hmm. And so then in um, about 89 or 90, we were out there just looking around where the hole for her grave was, where mm. they had dug it up, and we found some bones. And these bones here have been identified by uh, a radiologist and a couple of physicians. None of them want to put their name on their statement, but here is what they told us we have. That we have a human finger with a touch of with a touch of arthritis. And this is the finger this is this part of the finger. It's just three bones. It's just three bones. Of the left this, finger. This, this, and left this. hand little finger. Yeah, they actually identified it as left hand little finger. I don't know how they could do that. Huh. But um Let's say it's this finger. It's twice yeah. as long as mine. Right. right. So. So, this was in the. It was just loose in the dirt. Where they had dug the. Mm -hmm, grave where they up. had dug the grave up. Paul. And the jewels were sold on the market for somewhere around seventy to hundred million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, it's this, this. So that is so. That is so so okay. I think that's the because the um, the flood mm -hmm. also drowned the, it, 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 these giants, these Nephilim. Yes. Well, they were just people. Yeah, they were just people. They weren't any different from you or me. Noah was big. His wife was tall, but they look how long they lived. And God obviously changed something in our DNA after the flood. Uh, remember how he talked about um, at Babel? He said when he came and destroyed the tower. Yeah. He said nothing will be withheld from them if I don't intervene. Right. And so it's obvious mm -hmm. that mankind was was just so bad for him to wipe out the whole planet. Mm -hmm. He, uh, if you'll look mm -hmm. in the Bible at the ages of the patriarchs. Their ages were very long, long here, yeah. and then suddenly, immediately after, by the time they get down to Abraham, the ages get much shorter. Yes, yes. So yes. It, it appears, like, let's take dinosaurs. Hmm. Dinosaurs, if you look at a lot of the bones, they are the same animals that we have today, many of them. Hmm. Only, if you have a reptile, hmm. a reptile grows as long as he's alive. He doesn't have a cutoff in his DNA. Oh. He continues to grow in size a little bit every year. If you have an alligator that lived 500 years, mm. he'd be as long as this house. Mm. And you know, now mm -hmm. we have 15, 20 foot, um, I know somebody found a 30 foot alligator oh, yeah. skeleton. Oh. But not today, they're fossilized. Mm -hmm. Yes. So apparently man grew larger also okay but yeah but uh, mm -hmm. there's also another theory because mm -hmm. um the uh the nephilims the Nep the nephilims the it's in the book of I genesis thought, yeah, right, chapter yes. six and it and those were the giants they were just they were people though they yeah. weren't there's a lot of people who want the, to say that angels and men right. bred together. Uh -huh. That did not happen. I can guarantee you that. 
There's a scripture in the Bible that says that there is terrestrial flesh and yeah. there is celestial flesh. Right. And they don't combine. Mm. They don't combine. Mm. It talks about, um, you know, these tall, these big people. There were still a few left. There were still a few people mm. like uh, King of Bashan. Yeah, Bashan and, 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 like, and right. Ankh. There were still a few of them left. And they were just a few of the people, like pre-flood people. They were still large, oh. but we just don't have any left now. Mm -hmm. You know, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm, it's just another evidence that the Bible was true. Mm -hmm. That they were, they were big people. Mm -hmm. They really did exist. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I've got one sore back. I went to the chiropractor. Oh, so, so so that's yeah. yeah that's, I keep going upstairs and laying flat on the yeah, floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, these are some of the artifacts found on Noah's Ark. Just to show you one, for instance, this one is of course stone now. But if you look at it, it almost looks like they were making something. Yeah. You know. It yeah. Looks like it was making. Some pins, maybe they were pouring. Uh, maybe it was a wooden mold for mm -hmm. steel pins or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that came from that site. Uh, these are all petrified. This was at the top of the boat, oh. and it's lighter color petrification. Yes. And you get to the bottom of the boat, and the metals made everything darker oh. when it petrified. Mm -hmm. These. Bowls and things you're seeing are copies of some of the things pottery found in the Ark of the Covenant cave mm -hmm. and on the dig for the mm -hmm. Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. so these are some of the first temple items, a copy of them that he turned in to the IEA. Oh. oh. All right, now let's okay. talk about, remember we talked about the red cap that was found in the cross hole mm. of the WD-40 can. Yeah. Oh, that is... This is not the cap, but this is exactly like it. Mm. It's the ones that's made in the early 80s. Mm. Mm. And this cap was found in the cross hole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with dirt packed in it mm -hmm. where it had been there since Ron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think he left it there to show us that that was the cross hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is that type cap. This is the coin that was found. Wow. Vespasian. Coin. Mm. It's been cleaned. Mm. So this is a copper coin. Yes. We found, uh, we've tested the metal mm. and it's 100% or 99% copper. Mm. Okay, Roman coins that have been poured, like this one, mm. all have a little bit of lead in them. Mm. Where they smelt the coin, mm. when they poured it in the lead mold, mm -hmm. the, the, there'd be a little bit of lead mm -hmm. on the coin. Mm. All right, this coin, you see how thick it is? Yeah, it's very thick. Pretty thick. Yeah. It's probably uncirculated, mm. and it, but it's, this coin was copper with no lead, mm. which means it was pressed. Oh. A piece of copper in mm. a mold, hit hard with a hammer mm. to make this coin. Mm. So this is a counterfeit coin from that time period. Oh. It was not poured. It wasn't a Roman coin. This was a counterfeit coin from the early church that mm. was put into that hole. Mm. Okay? Mm. Here's another. This is a broken nail. Yeah. That was found. This would be like if it was a crucifixion nail. Mm -hmm. They would have broke it off. You know, they run it through and then they bend it in the back so mm. it won't come out. Mm. So it would make it easier just to break it. <clears throat> And pull it off that way. Mm. And this is one of them found on the site. Because mm. we don't know if it was used for Jesus or mm -hmm. anyone else, but mm. it was on the site. Mm. But it would be longer than that. Maybe yeah, the original nails would be, you know, six inches, mm. maybe longer, mm. because they had to go through the wood, the hand, the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, it would, yeah, if it yeah. went all the way through the wood, they would bend the back. A little bit so it wouldn't mm -hmm. pull through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, now this is a this is the 
one of seven lamps. See how it has the lamb or the ram up on the eating off the bush, kind of like Abraham and oh. Isaac's lamb. Yeah. It's caught in the thicket. Yeah. All right, and here's the other side. Ron originally thought that this blackened substance was the where their lamp was burning, and when they closed it in. It left this side burned from the from burning. We've since learned that this lamp was made from this material. This is just the blackened part is just the type of material that this lamp is made from. Now this is the curious part. This lamp was found in the Ark of the Covenant cave and cave system. But this lamp is a Roman lamp mm -hmm. from around Jesus' time. Mm -hmm. So how did Jesus' time lamp get into this section? We don't know, of course, but you know, 608 BC is when the first temple the furnishings were hid. Mm -hmm. And here we have a lamp. Maybe Jesus allowed the disciples or mm -hmm. someone else to mm -hmm. see this story mm -hmm. at a later time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why the disciples were so strong in what they believed that they saw that the blood had fallen on the mercy seat. Say it again, though. Maybe that's why they... I'm just saying this lamp was a Roman lamp. Mm -hmm. It wasn't made... We thought it was made in 586 B.C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we've since found that this lamp was made in Roman time, mm -hmm. which is more like Jesus' time. Mm -hmm. So that means that lamp was in the cave system with the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. In, in the Jesus later time, yeah, I see. In later Jesus time. time, yeah, yeah. So how did it get there? Mm. Except maybe God opened that door over there mm -hmm. in, the, in the cave system and let somebody come in there and see it. Mm. And this is the that's a ram, a uh, ram caught in a thicket or eating off of a thicket. Yeah, standing yeah. up on his hind legs, and oh. that's the way Abraham's. The, the ram was caught in a thicket, standing up on his, you know, his his horns were caught in the thicket. That's how they caught the sacrifice. Oh. Oh. And the horn, this is the horn. Uh-huh. Okay. So okay. that's kind of the picture of Abraham and Isaac's. So the ram God was says, standing up and trying to eat. God says, the, I'll provide the sacrifice. And then the, his horn got... Caught. Yeah. Okay. The Got ram it. was caught in a thicket. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. So yes. Abraham was able to get a sacrifice instead of Isaac. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. We said they were drilling holes in the in the through the cross holes. Well, this is the size hole that was trying to drill into the Ark of the Covenant cave. This is the limestone material. Hmm. This is a piece of, of the material that came out of one of the holes. Mm. There were probably over 30 or 40 holes drilled trying to go down into the Ark of the Covenant cave. But who drilled it? Richard. And the, this is what they were drilling. Oh. That's why when we found the correct cross hole, we could not tell them. Because oh. we didn't want them to destroy the site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, this looks like a picnic. Okay, also. this is the, when Ron entered the cave system, and when he first entered the Ark of the Covenant cave, the stalactite you see there was in the opening, and he broke it loose so, that, so they could claw through that hole into the cave system. And that's the actual stalactite from the cave system. And it shows the type of material that's in the cave. It's very hard. It's limestone that's turned into this hard substance. Mm. Okay. Mm. So this one was broke off, and that's how big the opening was. When they broke that off, then the smaller kid that was with, originally with Ron, ran away Aaron, or something. Yeah. Uh -huh, he was able to get in, and he came scurrying out. What's in there? What's in there? And he left the system and never came back. 
So Ron enlarged the hole, and that's when he crawled in January 6th, 2 o'clock, and mm -hmm. saw the gold of the Ark of the Covenant and the furnishings mm -hmm. in the cave. Mm -hmm. right, now this next item is pretty interesting. This whole thing here, mm -hmm. if you look at it, this is the pelvic bone with the backbone sticking up. This is the bones of someone that didn't turn to ash completely at Gomorrah. See, they burned up, but they didn't quite turn to ash. It, it preserved their, their bones. Uh -huh. So that's what's left of someone from Gomorrah. Uh -huh. and we have another bone over here in the other case from the same type site. Did you... Uh Analyze which part of the body of this bone or from animal? No, from it's human. Well, it's a pelvic bone with the backbone. Uh -huh. Everything's there bone. except for the skull. So there's, there's no skull. Like the backbone. Okay. Now, the backbone right when it comes off your pelvic bone. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a bone. See, like this is a bone with the marrow missing. This is another one that burned up. And the marrow of the bone is missing. Yeah. See, this is the bone that's that was burned at Gomorrah, mm -hmm. but it didn't quite turn to ash mm -hmm. like those over there. This bone is intact. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is the sulfur balls. Yeah. From Gomorrah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, and this is big one. That's a pretty good size one. They found one that was 15 pounds. A pretty big stone and from Babel we have you know he said he, he'd gone to Babel hmm. here's a brick from Babel oh see the brick see the hammer a hammer stone like if you had a piece of wood in the middle there strapped like an Indian hammer or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then there's some more tools down mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and then here's the some more used uh, for these are probably used for making thread oh. and then this is a leg from a from a um, um, what do you call it a, a foreign god you know one of their gods oh. on Babel oh. and then this case on the bottom is how the pyramids are built and you'll basically see that these levers as you turn on each end the ropes Mm. The arms would move like this. They'd go up. Mm. And the flat parts here in the middle, they'd go up. Mm. And the, where the one up here would be moving down. Mm -hmm. And they would meet together mm -hmm. here and here. Mm. And they would change the pigs mm. and just keep moving it up. Mm. Just keep moving it up. Just like this back one that you see here is moving everything back up to the top. That's why when you look at the Great Pyramid, mm. it has big stone round spots. Um, around the pyramid, and that's that's what held the base of these big uh, devices. Mm. And Ron built one of these, and Japanese TV mm. was um, on the, the Great Pyramid, showing how these things worked. Oh, Japanese TV. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were there. We have a film of that. Oh, and this is kind of interesting. Of um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, what is this? I this is it. that is a brick from Babel. Brick. Oh, okay. <coughs> a baked brick. Oh. See? Mm. So Babel was built with these. Mm. Okay. This is a example of in Egypt, uh, what's it, Baal? Is that the name of that? What? Oh, I what's know the name those. of the little god here? Oh, oh, that. She hadn't said that. Um, it's example of Baal, right? No, 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 it's not an example of Baal. Uh, what's the name of it? Is that the wife of the uh, uh -huh. Baal, right? Wow. Semiramas? Semiramas, and then... Sorry, anyway, it's okay, it's one of the foreign gods, okay? Yeah. This is one that was, you know, they would bury these, they would put these in the tombs with the, 
with them when they died and that kind of thing. Mm. All right, and then this little guy that looks just like him was found right here in Tennessee with a metal detector. Marinell's dad found this in Tennessee out in the field with a metal detector. And it's the very same image yeah. that was used in Egypt. Of course, these are examples of, of the different things in Egypt that you'd find. Mm -hmm. Here's your scarabs that have the, the back has the name of the pharaohs. Um, mm. Mm. Has a cartouche on the back mm. that describes who it is, mm. and we know that Thutmose the fourth was the pharaoh that died in the Exodus, mm. and Marinell's done in research the Red Sea in the Red Sea crossing. Yeah, Marinell's done the research with Ron that twenty years of work and has determined that the firstborn that died in the plagues. Yeah. Okay, the 10th, when the firstborn died, the 10th plague, the firstborn of Egypt was King Tut. Mm -hmm. King Tut was the firstborn that died in the, in the, the first Passover. Oh. That's why his tomb was prepared so quickly and uh, he wasn't intended to be in that tomb. He was the young guy. Yeah. Right. Let's see, I almost forgot this case. Andrew brought a bunch of this stuff. Okay, Cadis Barnea, one of the things that Ron, <clears throat> one of the things that Ron discovered was Kadesh Barnea, just like the Rock of Horeb where Moses struck the rock and the mm -hmm. water came out. Mm -hmm. Kadesh Barnea is the second place where he struck the rock. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a pestle, you know, like a, you have a mortar and a pestle, you grind up the s spices. Yes. This was found at Kadesh mm -hmm. uh, a month ago. Mm -hmm. this, this came from Kadesh Barnea. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. This bone mm. and this bone mm. Or fossilized, I mean, coralized with mm. coral, mm -hmm. came from the Saudi side mm. of the Red Sea crossing mm -hmm. and the Egypt side of the Red Sea crossing. Oh. One from each side. These are human bones. Human bones. Okay, these are seeds of Elam at Elam. Yeah. These are from the palm trees at Elam. I just brought those back. I've got one planted out here, and we'll see if it's going to grow. This is wood. Cool. This is wood from the cliff between the rocks on top of Mount Sinai. There's a tree growing up there, and this is the dead limb, part of the dead limb from that tree. And it looks to be a, a spruce, some type of spruce tree. Hmm. We thought it was an almond tree, but as we looked at the wood, we found a living one down a little bit, and it was a spruce. A type of spruce, some type of evergreen mm. spruce type tree. Mm. So this is on top of the Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Up on, okay, remember where it talks about they put Moses between the cleft between the rocks? Yes. But there's a place up there that has two rocks with mm. a tree growing in between them. That it could be the cleft between the rocks. And this tree was growing up there. Oh. All right, and then this. Are, these are some rocks that have been brought back from the very top of Mount Sinai. Andrew's been up there, and about five or six guys have been up there. This is the blackened peak, the blackened side of Mount Sinai. Mm. And it broke the rock off, you flip it over, and it's not blackened on the other side. Why? See, this side God walked on, burned, and said it burned with smoke. Yes. Thundering smoke. Yeah. This side. This is your regular side. Yeah. So God may have walked on that very place, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because that that the top portion I saw the picture. The top portion was black. The black and peak. That's yeah. where that came from. Black this is some more. This one's just a black piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's another one that's blackened. Yeah. Yeah. I broke it off, and the other yeah. side doesn't have the blacking. Yeah.
course, there's some more of that. I broke this one off. Mm. There's one side. Mm. Right. Here is a piece of Andrew found on top of Mount Sinai. It's a piece of granite that resembles what be maybe the width and maybe even the type of rock that the tables of stone are made of. It was found just like this, except a little longer, he said. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He broke it in half so he could bring it down a little easier. So, so you mean that the... This the, is a piece of granite. The, that, that that's Ten Commandments were written on this kind of... Something maybe similar to something like this. Uh -huh. Ron said it was like the rock that was up on top of the mountain. And uh -huh. this is similar. Mm -hmm. This is similar to the rock that's up there. I see, I see, I see. This is a piece of granite from around Moses' altar. There was uh, a granite, a marble, this piece of marble, white oh. marble, oh. from Moses' altar site. And there were a lot of round pillars and pieces that, that built a memorial. Solomon built a memorial there. For oh. Moses' altar, oh. and this is what that marble's made from. Oh. And there's some quarries up on the side of the mountain that that have been quarried that they think that Solomon quarried to get the pieces they needed. Oh. Oh. This is a th small thread found on Noah's Ark. Right, oh. okay. a very small thread. Mm -hmm. When they put the microscope to it, the light from the microscope came through the fiber. Like a fiber optic fiber. Yeah, I was going to say this is like <laughs> little Noah's Ark. <laughs> so figure that one out. You know. Okay. Here's some wells. We didn't. We didn't see that. We haven't seen pictures of these till now. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. From a, from above. At the Mount Sinai site. Mm. These are wells. That are right next to the, the side of the wall where the water, see they're double walled? Yeah. And the water would come through and they would get their water. Here's the wells along the edge of the lake. And here's, a, here's the flight up, up above. You can see the edge of that well, double walled. Big rock, big rocks with yeah. little rocks in between. Yeah. 18 foot in diameter. And that's where the, there's the line where the, the water level is. Mm. And so the water was like this picture coming out of these wells. So they camp, these riders that came there. For yeah, this is the camp area and actually back this way. The golden calf altars here. Mm. This is the riverbed like you see here. There's the golden calf altar. Yes. Uh, Moses' altar is right here. Mm. That's what you're seeing here. Oh. From above. See? Yeah, oh. That's the holy precinct. Here's the cleft between the rocks. Remember I told you? Yeah. There's a tree in between the two rocks. Oh. That tree's a piece of it's thrown over there. Do you want to mm. come on this here is a cave of Elijah. Show some of these things oh. on this screen. This cave is the cave of Elijah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Up on the side of the mountain yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's right there, and then there's the black and peak going up. Yes. To show you where you're at. Mm. And then here's the rock of Horeb, which you're looking at here. Here's a rock of Horeb. And to show you how tall it is, here's a person standing. Mm -hmm. See? Yes, yes. Wow. Look how the weathered rock around is just weathered. And this area only gets a quarter inch of rain a year. Mm. You see how it stands up there in the distance. Mm. That's a forbidden military zone. Very hard to get into. Mm -hmm. And here's the golden calf altar with the etchings of the bulls on the side. Yes. And this trip we also found, like I was telling you, we found a painting, a red dye okay. from Egypt. Okay. This is the Red Sea crossing site. I could put a couch there with a chair. On the Saudi the side. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, this is where the pillar used to be. Like this is the wadi where the, when they crossed, they would go up yeah. into this yeah. this area. Mm. Yeah. This is the where the column used to be. 
Hmm. Now it's, you see the water in the background? Yeah. We've also, we've recently found that the, they broke the column and buried it. And look, here's an area that's been dug up next to it there, possibly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to scratch through that, see if we can't find the column. Uh, do you see the, how it was pointing over here to the side? <coughs> see that? There's a gold detector. Hmm. Pointing over here to the side. Hmm. Okay, and I'm going to move over here. Recognize that? Recognize that? Mm -hmm. That's the where it's pointing. The crack. Over, he's standing over the crossover. Okay, that's silver. He's got yeah, silver, silver right now. Okay. Anyway, that is, that spot is showing gold and silver readings. Mm hmm And that's a that's where the Ark of the Covenant is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where he's standing. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. This is the the, the wood floor is. Yes. Yeah. With the garden too. There it is. I found oh, it. Mm, I found it too. I just found it also. <laughs> Okay, there's the sword. <laughs> standing by it. Yeah. Whoa. The same. But I have one with Ron standing by it. Yeah. By it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> see, it looks pretty much the same. We Whoa. saw that one online. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah. This oh, yeah, one is one that that's another man made. That. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We saw that photo. Yeah, online. I saw yeah. this photo in, in the internet. And, and there's a drawing of the. Well, anyway, the size of the not uh, not the not right. the actual draw not the actual drawing right. of the Ark of the Covenant, but yeah. the, just to show how yes, the that, dimension is. Yeah, those are Jim Pinkowski's drawings. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right now, holding it. You know. Oh wow. That's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. And what I want to say is because you know in that drawing it uh -huh. shows uh, the 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 width and the the height mm -hmm. and the length. Mm -hmm. Right and in inches, right. Yeah, and then two I inches. and because there's two and a half according to the Bible is one and a half cube and then right. two and a half cube. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. and I match that with the archaeological finding of the um, uh, the royal cube, right. the length royal of cube. the royal cube, mm -hmm. and it match exactly. Yeah, twenty point six two inches. Yeah. 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 So that was, but Ron told me that the tops of the heads of the cherubim came to about right here. And actually, in that picture, it shows them at waist level. It was my chest. And it's actually the top of it is more like chest level. So it's smaller there. Yeah. So they're smaller. The angels are. Uh -huh. The angels mm -hmm. okay. okay. The Bible's right. dimensions only for the box, not for the angels. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So that's really about all the specifics that he really gave about that. Now, a lot of drawings of, or a lot of images of the Ark of the Covenant mm -hmm. are wrong in the way that the stay. Yes. That is on the long side, right? Not the yes. short side. There's because a lot of drawings are right. showing on the. It's Even Temple the Institute, side. they show it on the short side, uh -huh. the one and a half cube side, mm -hmm. which is wrong. Wrong. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. yeah, I just want to... And that way, when it's like, here's the here's the holy place, mm -hmm. or the most holy place. Yes. And, That's the um, east. This, yeah, and, yeah. Right, and so mm. it, here's the middle, you know, coming down, and the Ark of the Covenant, when it's in here and the staves are sticking out, that means that it's oriented this way, when, east, when, the, east, west, west. when the priest goes in, he had to turn. Yeah, that's what I believe. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah, the Bible's pretty clear on that, but yeah. it doesn't spell, spell it out. Right. You have to put well the pieces enough. together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to put the pieces together. Because like when you sprinkle the blood on the east side, yes. so you know it's on one side of the mercy seat. Right. And then the verse in First Kings that talks about the staves being seen from the holy place. And we so yeah, you cannot, know the staves are going this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see yeah. from within, you cannot see from without. Yeah, so could yeah. Long, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So using those two verses together, you know that the ark was oriented east the well, Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah. the then the reason why it's on the reserve the, the west side mm -hmm. is reserved for Jesus yes. is because it's because the, the mercy seat is the throne of yeah. 
God on Earth, and right. and with, with the the East West orientation, yeah. you know, and with the um, the 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 angel's wing on the back, so they actually form the the back rest of the throne. Mm -hmm. So when God sent, you know, Christ will be right side. yeah yeah the West will be mm -hmm. his right side, and that make perfect sense because Jesus sit on the Right. right side of God, and it's and, and, and in Bible, right side is always the right side, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's the side you want to be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, yeah. The, the 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 prominent the side, side prominent. you know, the yeah, the prestigious side, the right side. Yeah. You want to be on the right side, you want to be right. Yeah. And so like yeah, so when Jesus crucified. The the one on the right side got saved. The one on the left side didn't get saved. Right, yeah. Yeah, so. And you know, one way of looking at it is when Jesus' blood went on that mercy seat, it went on to the, on top of the tables of stone. And it showed that that was what, Je that was the law, that Jesus was covering. Covering. Yeah. The sins yeah. of breaking that law. Yes. So, uh, and, and a lot of people today, and you know this, a lot of people want to say, the Ten Commandments were done away with. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and how, I mean, if that was well, the case. You know, in the book of Daniel, it actually prophesied that when the Antichrist come, he, right, he, he, he will uh, change the law. He will right. basically. Right. Uh, change right? times. And change the time, season. Times and all, yeah, and the Lord. So then like, he will mm -hmm. just want that to be done with. Yeah. 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 So it, it all has such important meaning. Such important meaning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I believe that now um, this is the restoration mm -hmm. that to the real right. Word well, of God. Well, so we they, we're in the process of that. Right. Before before it's all over with and we're all you know, before Jesus comes and takes us with him mm -hmm. to his father's house. Mm -hmm. He'll have a, what I believe mm. is that God will have a people mm. on this planet uh -huh. who will have pure doctrine and they will yes, understand I the understand. truth. understand, yeah. That's what, That's I, what I, what I'm, yeah, yeah, I have that conviction too. Yeah. And I see the restoration from yeah. uh, all, you know, different uh, um, faces. For example, the archaeology, archaeological, archaeological mm -hmm. biblical Findings, yes. right, mm -hmm. and the understanding of the scriptures, yes. and the restoration to the mm -hmm. the real word of God, the authentic, right, you know, word of God, and also including the 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 feast, the moedim of the uh, the Yahweh, you know, the Passover, you know, all these, you I know, believe, yeah, the, and the, these the true meaning and it, the meaning, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I mean. I'll tell you right now, I don't believe you have to keep the feasts mm -hmm. any longer. We mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. because all the feasts involved uh -huh. sacrifices. Uh -huh. But we're supposed to study them and understand Be and, uh -huh. you know, Be like... Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because okay, it's, 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 uh, it, it, because it's, um... It's all part of the big uh, picture. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, that's the, the shadow of the right. good things to come. Yes. But, but in the meantime, the... Out of the seven feasts, mm -hmm. the, the the spring feast, you know, it's a prophetic shadow of his first coming. Mm -hmm. While mm -hmm. the the fall. the fall feast mm -hmm. is to be fulfilled, right? For his seven, so second coming, so there right. is a, it, it is also a shadow mm -hmm. of the yes the good things to come, and that's yeah. why we right yeah. And uh, so it, you a, know, it's amazing. Him, would you think you'd ever meet any people who think like this? 20 years ago? No. 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 Uh-uh. No. Not even nowadays it's I know. very Very. Yeah. I know. Just a very small very portion of Yeah, but when yeah. you start to realize these things, yeah. Yeah, it's like wow. Oh. I know. Yeah, it, it yeah. And yeah, we like your eyes are open, open and, and it's like, "Oh, wow." I I was um 2 weeks ago 2 weeks ago I was in that in Israel, right? And then they show us I think it's like 80 acres of the land that somebody bought, you know, back back to like maybe 30, 40 years or 50 years ago. Okay. And the 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 reason he bought it is he wants to restore, you know, all the uh, descriptions of the plants that oh. 
mm. that is described in Bible. Mm -hmm. And he wants to That's cool. show <laughs> how the promised land yeah. actually looked like. That would be amazing. Yeah, and how the how the oh. the, the land flow with milk and honey. Oh, what does it mean and how is it? So yeah. he so that and we were brought in there and and show all kinds of uh, plants and how they all planting plant together and so and so and uh, yeah we learned so much and uh, to me it just hit me at that time like wow this is another restoration yeah you know to mm -hmm. in uh, right put, put in right in front of your eyes yeah what the beautiful Bible land you know in the Bible wow. talk about yeah, yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be some? It's a return to Eden. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's going to be something one day to get to see all that. It, yeah. And mm. yeah. And and, and they then they were told like oh you know when God told Moses that this the land I'm going to brought you bring you in it's not like the Egypt you got all the rivers yeah. right and you have to irrigate and you can mm. you get water from rivers and then it's no this do. this yeah. is. God. This land, God will rain down yeah. the rain and the mildew and the dews yeah. to yeah. nourish the land and so on. Like, oh, this is beautiful. I know, I want to be oh. there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they ex right explain like, why it's you know, flow with milk and honey. How do you understand that part, right? I know. Yeah, and, and, and then the, uh, the, 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 the guide was saying that it is such a beautiful land and all the different plants and herbs and you know they all you know grow yeah. there so beautifully and so that the uh the the sheep you know um because at that time they were still shepherds right mm -hmm. you know right yeah and so they when they so the the the, the sheep when they see the land they are so happy yeah so they are very happy to produce the right to produce the milk yeah. So so they will have they will have abundant milk and then also the because the land is so beautiful and the flowers mm -hmm. they're so you know everything's so good so the the honey you know the bees right. will come and get all the honeys and yeah. abundance of honey and so on oh, just, just I know I just I can't wait to see <laughs> the the new earth you know to see the way yeah woo. yeah so I so then I, that's so how I realized that wow well, now you know God is wish Restoring yeah. all these true knowledges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us again about this and that. Okay. Ah, all right. That's in the book, but he. It's in the book, but this is a uh, this is what we call a drogue stone, and it acts so, like kind of like what you'd think of as an anchor because they would take the rope through the top hole, run it off the side of the boat, and you put a whole bunch of them, and it helps stabilize the boat in the big waves. Oh. Right? And these, when they got to this one area where we now know it's Noah's village, they cut a lot of these loose, and they landed right here in this village area. And you can see Mount Ararat in the background. This is a picture of Ron Wyatt. And here's a, another piece that's actually like a piece of bark. It looks like a piece of bark that's petrified. And now we now know that the bottom of the boat had a keelson like what a sailboat would have. And when the boat originally landed, it stuck in the mud and the mud flow from the volcano moved it down the hill and it ripped the bottom out of the boat and ripped the 120 feet section out of the bottom of the boat. Mm -hmm. And it moved down the hill and impaled the boat on this big rock. And this is what made it stick here on this part of the hill. You can see the mud flow that it came down in. And here's a piece of slag that was in the bottom of the boat for ballast. We have that over here in the case. Mm -hmm. This piece of slag is, is uh, a lot of iron. So if Noah needed iron hinges or some kind of metal, he would just t take a piece of this, melt it down, put it in the shape he wanted it, mm -hmm. and he'd have a source for metal. Mm -hmm. Metal hinges or tools or whatever they needed.